Now, I've been pretty optimistic recently about Lyft, given the huge Uber versus Lyft battle and with everything Lyft is doing and the new CEO. Until now, this is a really just uniquely negative sign. Let's look at this. Now, I'm on Yahoo Finance right now. And as you can see, Lyft is open, quote unquote, open to selling itself. There might not be any buyers. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. <laughs> because this article is more based off the stocks and the finances of Lyft. But remember, even if you don't care about stock trading or finances or anything, if a company financially is not doing well, it's not going to exist for too long, right? And here's the big kicker. Here's like the big synopsis of this entire video. The CEO, David Reacher, said that the, the rideshare company is open to selling itself. But the kicker is there's no obvious acquire, right? And you can see this right here. I've taught this before. Left has struggled to get its margins under control and retain market share over the, the last few years. Obviously, Uber's been doing a lot well. And here is, I think, like the big thing right here. Um, so this is a equity research analyst, David Ives. Hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. The question is, who would actually buy it? This is a bold statement right here. Lyft has been a disaster name and execution challenges are just building up, forcing some serious strategic decisions from the board. The company is burning cash at a 1980s rock star pace and a sale could be an option. Although potential buyers and price is a head scratcher for the street. That is a bold claim, you know, uh, going down here. And this is the big thing is what kind of asset even is left? There's no easy answer here. It's media tech and infrastructure doesn't fit really neatly in anything or anywhere. So the problem is a lot of researchers and analysts are saying, look, even if you want to buy Lyft at a good deal, is it even worth it? Like, why should you even do it, right? I mean, going on here, there are some, you know, options right here of who could potentially buy it, but things are getting really, really tricky. Now, this is a big quote from the CEO, David Reacher. Just like any public company, we have a fiduciary responsibility to consider what's in the best interest for stakeholders, but importantly, this is not a focus. However, here's the thing. CEOs don't go around saying they're open to offers if they're not on some level, right? So he's definitely considering this and it's just a tricky thing. Now looking down here, right? Cause even look, you know, however, not take the wind out of absolutely every possibility, pretty pessimistic, even private equity might not want Lyft. So this is Lyft's cash burning, right? Again, I know it seems random for drivers and everything, but this is important to look at, right? I mean, especially like in quarter one of last year. I mean, that's insane. As you can see right here, for example, in quarter one, um, the revenue was about a billion dollars, but the net loss was 187.6 million. Translation, they cannot afford this cash burn anymore. As you can imagine, I'm definitely not happy about this. You know, I've done a bunch of videos, maybe over 10, about Uber versus Lyft in terms of what Uber's doing. Uber doing great. Lyft not doing well, the new CEO. These kind of like mini updates in the battle and the drama and the beef, for lack of a better word, between Uber and Lyft. And yes, I have talked about in previous videos, the Lyft CEO is saying, look, we're not doing Uber versus Lyft. We're kind of running our own race, right? And I do kind of like that perspective. It reminds me when I did track, not to get philosophical, but I remember my uh, my coach had a quote that you run and race with others, but you compete only with yourself. And so I do like the CEO's perspective on that. But here's the things that get tricky. One, I personally, and I feel like this is true for most drivers based off statistics, I like Lyft more than Uber. If I had to pick either company doing better, I'd probably pick Lyft. The second thing is the yin and yang balance of Uber and Lyft. Do I think they would allow, and they did touch upon this in this article super briefly, would they allow Uber to purchase Lyft? I don't think so, because that'd be a huge monopoly over ride sharing and everything. I don't think the government would allow that, at least I hope not. But it is tricky. Like, I don't know. And I think what's really difficult about this is I feel like both need to exist in the ecosystem, right? I can't really think, and I may be wrong. So let me know what you think in the comments, but I can't think of any other industry that has such an impact. I mean, think about it. Everybody takes Ubers and Lyfts. So imagine tomorrow if we woke up and ride sharing was gone completely. The world would be, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but especially here in America where it's super popular, a lot of people's lives would be flipped upside down. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I mean, 
we're so used to it now that ride sharing is everywhere. And I can't think of any other industry that's so big and so integrated in our everyday society as ride sharing is. And yet, let's say if there's only Uber, or what, for example, I can think of any other industry if there's only two big ones. And yes, there are other apps popping up. They're very specific location based. I've done some videos about why it's so hard to start a new ride sharing app. You know, there's some that are only in Washington, D.C., or only in Phoenix, Arizona, or only in Austin, Texas. There are some that are very location specific, and they do okay. It's not like they're bad, but to have the the crazy spread that Uber Lyft does is ridiculous. And I think that at this point, it is just so tough to say what's going to happen. Again, I'm rooting for Lyft. I'm hoping things get better and they get kind of back on track. But for example, you know, this past weekend I went out. It was Memorial Day weekend this past weekend. And Lyft, every time, was more expensive than Uber. And not only was it more expensive than Uber, but also Uber got there quicker than Lyft did. And it's one of those situations where I'm like, eh, you know, it's a, I guess like a vicious cycle or, you know, a downward spiral where Lyft says, shoot, we got to charge people more because we need the money. And because they're charging people more, a lot of people are saying, well, let's just take an Uber then. And so less people take Lyft and it creates, creates this like double-edged sword where either you charge more money for a ride, but it's more likely that people just take an Uber or you charge less money, but then you're in this weird financial and horrible financial crisis. And it's this odd paradox of like, well, what do you do now, right? And of course, CEO is making drastic moves. I talked about how he laid over a thousand people off. He's making people come back from being remote workers to coming back into the office. He removed um, the uh, the left shared option and really is now pushing wait and save. So he is making a lot of moves and I'm hoping they turn out well, but this is a really tough battle because what I'm very curious about now looking in the future is if something does actually happen where Uber acquires Lyft or another company acquires Lyft or whatever, what does that mean for drivers? Are you gonna get paid more or less? If Uber realizes, hey, we're the only ones in the market, they can kind of pay you whatever they want. And usually, and let's be honest, it's usually gonna be in a negative way or in an unfortunate way. So at this point, I don't really know what to expect. You know, I feel like this is probably the most pessimistic article I've ever seen. And granted, it was on Yahoo Finance. So they're not thinking about ride sharing as more as the numbers behind companies. So they're looking at it from a very analytical numbers driven perspective. But I hate to say it, if the finances are not there, if the numbers are not there, that means Lyft might not be there. <sighs> this is not good.